Now we've got some really good friends helping us out today. Jacob and Hagen. Now they're complete novices to paddling. They've gone to the rental livery and they're gonna be helping us demonstrate some of the principles that we're talking about today. Why don't you go out and start having some fun. Okay. Anyone familiar with the peaceful nature of paddling knows that there are few moments of tranquility in life that compare to the serenity of being out on the open water or paddling down a lazy river in a canoe or kayak. However, as with any water sport, it is vitally important to follow certain rules and guidelines to help ensure your safety. In this video, we're going to briefly outline some important rules, laws, pointers and skills you need to know before you paddle out on the open water so that you can have a safe and enjoyable experience. You should make preparations before starting your trip. Be prepared for emergencies and let someone know where you are going. This is called a float plan. An average paddler without wind and current will paddle three miles each hour. If you have a map or chart for your trip, you can use this knowledge to plan accordingly. Give yourself more time to return on your trip than when you went out, as you will be more tired. Don't attempt any trip that will be too long for your physical condition. The wind kind of pushed us out. Yeah, I actually yeah. noticed that. Do you have any trouble getting back? Because the wind is going, the wind was pushing you out. Yeah, it took a little bit extra arm muscle, but we did it. <laughs> we I thought it was He-Man at first. I'm paddling a little bit, we got the wind behind us, and we're just like cruising. Right. And Good. turned around, and it wasn't quite as easy. Keep in mind that weather conditions can change quickly on the water and plan and dress appropriately. If possible, plan for unexpected immersion and consider carrying extra clothes in a plastic bag. Pack appropriate gear, such as drinking water, sunscreen, snacks, and a safety whistle for your trip, and don't forget shoes. Bare feet have no place in paddling. The terrain of the land and the potential hazards under the water can be hazardous if you need to portage your vessel. Consider taking some means of communication. A portable VHF, FM radio, or a cell phone may be appropriate depending on your location or intended route. It is also important to know and be able to recognize the signs of hypothermia. The most common symptoms of hypothermia include shivering, lack of coordination, slurred speech, confusion, drowsiness, or impaired judgment. If you land in water and your body temperature goes below 85 degrees, your chances of survival are greatly reduced. Wind and water together can lower your body temperature even on a warm day. If you are new to paddling, by nature of the activity, there's a good chance that you may spend time in the water. Unfortunately, 80% of all canoe fatalities and 46% of all kayak fatalities are due to not wearing a life jacket. Now experienced paddlers know this and are four times as likely to wear their life jackets. You should too. All life jackets must be US Coast Guard approved be of the proper size for the intended wearer, be in good and serviceable condition, including straps and zippers, and properly stowed. Keep in mind that if your life jacket is not snug, it is not properly fitted. And remember, for children under the age of 13, the use of a life jacket is required by federal law. Your rental boat livery will advise you of any local and state requirements regarding child life jacket wear while paddling. The Coast Guard recommends you always wear your life jacket while boating. When it comes time to actually board your boat, follow these safety guidelines. Have someone steady the vessel as you get in. Many unnecessary accidents happen while actually boarding a canoe or kayak. Stay low. 
Keep your shoulders inside the gunnels and keep your knees bent. Hold the sides of the vessel for balance as you walk to your seat and always maintain three points of contact with the boat. Walk in the center of the boat and avoid sudden movements in order to keep it from rocking back and forth. In a canoe, always sit on the seats positioned centrally in the vessel. Sitting on the sides of the canoe may cause the vessel to capsize. Keep your head, shoulders, and hips in a vertical and upright alignment. If any of these get out of alignment, then a capsizing may occur. I noticed when you were first getting started, you guys almost a little looked, looked wobbly, a little, a little, a little, a little <laughs> shaky there. You got used to it though? Yeah. Yeah. All it right. took a little bit of getting used to, but we found that settling in the center really helped. Right. Uh, you move a little bit to the left or right, and it makes a big impact. Yeah. Important to keep three points of contact, especially in a kayak. When yeah, you're, you'll when you're tip trying. over. They're pretty light. Once out on the open water, there are rules of the road that you are required to know when it comes to paddling. While you are sure to find times of solitude, chances are really good that you will be sharing the waterway with other boaters. Always keep a lookout for other boating traffic and the potential hazards that may exist. It's a good idea to stay relatively close to the shoreline. Paddling across an open expanse can be extremely dangerous due to vessel traffic and weather conditions. Paddling vessels are not nearly as large, fast, or stable as power boats and can easily capsize when hit broadside by the weight created by other vessels or the wind. If a wave is heading in your direction, quickly turn your bow into the wave so you don't take the wave broadside. And never assume another vessel can see you and always wear brightly colored clothes or life jackets. Never think you are fast enough to pass in front of a moving power vessel. The safest way to cross the path of a powerboat is to do so astern or behind the vessel. If your whole paddling group finds itself in front of a powerboat, be courteous and mindful of the stopping distances of these other vessels. If paddling at dusk or at night, you should have a white light aboard. Now a flashlight will meet this requirement. If other vessels are in your vicinity, this light must be displayed in time to prevent a collision. If you don't have a light on your canoe or kayak, don't paddle after dark. You should also have some means of making the appropriate sound signals. A whistle will meet this requirement. So now we saw you for part of the time, but I noticed some of the times you, you kind of headed out uh, I always, were you alone out there? Did you have anybody else out there? No. There were a few times where we'd see some boats coming through. We had some skiers and, you know, for the most part it was fine, but sometimes the wake would come alongside. And right. The wind kind of pushed us out too. Your rental livery company should alert you of any buoys, markers, and lights that you will encounter on your journey. Pay close attention since these navigation aids all have significance. They direct vessel traffic and they indicate channels. There are also orange and white informational buoys that may indicate swimming areas or other danger like rocks. Since the events of 9-11, recreational boating has changed and you need to be aware of any restrictions on your local lakes and rivers or in your path of travel, including, but not limited to, restricted bridges abutments, dams, power plants, and the restriction of all crafts within 100 yards of all U.S. Navy vessels. Again, your rental boat livery is your primary source of information here. While paddling, Always be aware of strainers. Strainers are fallen trees, bridge or dock pilings, undercut rocks, or anything else that allows current to flow through but can hold you and trap you or your boat. Strainers can be deadly. Be conservative on the water, 
If unsure of a potential hazard, give wide berth and go around it. On many waters, you may find low head dams. These can be dangerous and are usually marked with orange and white warning buoys. Stay away from floodwaters as they can be strong and dangerous, capable of pinning you and your boat or even snapping it in half against a rock or other obstacle. When on coastal waters, make sure you understand tidal movements and how they affect your boat. Stay relatively close to shore and as you paddle further from places of safety, make sure you have the necessary strength and skills to paddle back. Do not stand up in either a canoe or a kayak and avoid weight shifts that may cause capsizing. By far, capsizing is the most common cause of paddling accidents in either a canoe or a kayak. While paddling, always be aware of strainers. Strainers are fallen trees, bridge or dock pilings, undercut rocks, or anything else that allows current to flow through but can hold you and trap you or your boat. Strainers can be deadly. Be conservative on the water. If unsure of a potential hazard, give wide berth and go around it. On many waters, you may find low head dams. These can be dangerous and are usually marked with orange and white warning buoys. Stay away from floodwaters as they can be strong and dangerous, capable of pinning you and your boat or even snapping it in half against a rock or other obstacle. When on coastal waters, make sure you understand tidal movements and how they affect your boat. Stay relatively close to shore and as you paddle further from places of safety, make sure you have the necessary strength and skills to paddle back. Do not stand up in either a canoe or a kayak and avoid weight shifts that may cause capsizing. By far, capsizing is the most common cause of paddling accidents in either a canoe or a kayak. Or what would you have done if you were to capsize, do you know? Uh, You're wearing your life jacket, so that's yeah. good. Yeah. That's that's rule number one. Definitely thankful to have these on and then probably would have tried to hold onto the boat, paddle in. Right, well we're gonna learn exactly what to do if, if, you, if the canoe yeah. tips over. If your canoe or kayak tips over, don't panic. Stay with your boat and paddle or swim it to shore if you are close to the shore. When swimming to shore, keep your body flat on the surface with your feet up at the surface. Do not try to stand up in a river situation due to potential hazards. Backstroke or swim aggressively to shore. Stay upstream of your boat and be careful you don't get crushed between your boat and any obstacle in the water. Your vessel may continue to float even with water in it. Once safely on shore, carefully flip the vessel back over to dump out the water Assess the situation and decide whether to relax a while or continue. Change clothes if necessary. If another boat capsizes, first worry about the safety of the passengers, then go after the paddler's boat and equipment and do so only if this can be done safely. Practice capsizing and reboarding techniques with assistance in shallow water. Always conduct yourself with courteous behavior. Respect the rights of other paddlers, motorized vessels, landowners, and anglers. Stay as far away from them as is safe and practical. Be cautious when crossing busy waterways and stay near the shore and shallower areas. Avoid large vessels and navigable channels. If you do need to cross a channel, do so at a right angle to the waterway in order to reduce your time in the crossing. Obey all rules and regulations and use only public access points. Don't engage in inappropriate behavior, never litter, do not disturb wildlife, and minimize environmental impact when launching, portaging, stopping for lunch, camping, or using nature's restroom. How about portaging? Did you do any portaging? 
What's... Portaging. <laughs> <laughs> portaging is actually where you take your canoe out of the water. Oh. And portage, portage means you take it over like a piece of land where you carry your canoe from one gotcha. point okay. to another. But I know you probably didn't know. Good to know but... that. Good to, right. good to know. We'll learn that one. Don't drink and boat. Like any other activity, paddling and alcohol do not mix. Never go paddling while under the influence of alcohol or drugs. The operation of any vessel while intoxicated is dangerous and against local, state, and federal laws. Good judgment is critical while on the water. Be aware that the effects of alcohol consumption can be intensified when you're out on the water due to a number of contributing factors such as heat and movement. Don't take any chances. By following the simple steps in this presentation, you can make sure your paddling experience is fun and safe. If you understand the potential hazards that exist all around you and act responsibly to avoid them, you will have a safe boating experience to enjoy and remember. It's always a good idea to take a paddling safety course. There are many advanced paddling techniques to learn that will make your future paddling experiences fun and safe. Again, never boat and drink, and always wear your life jacket. The more time you spend on the water, the more experienced you will become. But no matter how many hours you have on the water, always use common sense, stay alert, and make note of your surroundings every time you take a stroke of the paddle. Your safety is our prime concern, but ultimately, safety on the water depends on you. Mm -hmm.